All right, so now that we know a little bit about what you can and can't patent, given that mostly everything's patented as a utility patent, what the hell is a utility patent? Okay, this is an invention of a new or useful process. Machine, manufacture, or composition of matter, right? Or a new or useful improvement thereof. So again, an improvement patent will fall under a utility patent. That's why like mostly everything is a utility patent that exists. So it has to do primarily with how an item functions or how a patented idea will function in an item. An item is abstract. Item, like what's, how do you itemize software? Uh, because it doesn't, it's not something you can hold necessarily. Or how can you itemize a, a process any, anymore? Because processes are, are more abstract um, than, they, than they used to be. You don't need to know this in specific, um, but just some categories of utility patents could be a machine. Something with, with moving parts. Anything that has moving parts on it is typically considered uh, a machine. It has to be like, you know, not just like, uh, my stool that I'm sitting on, I'm sitting on a drum throne, you know, it has, you know, uh, you can loosen it and raise it up and down, um, you know, and the tripod on it moves, but it's not necessarily a machine. Um, but I mean, you, it, it could be considered a machine, you know, but like if you have a, a fixed stool, like a stool that does not move or have moving parts, it could be a uh, article of manufacture. So something that doesn't have like moving or fixed parts is not a machine. So I, actually, I guess my, my drum throne is a machine because you can raise and move it up. The tripod the camera's sitting on is a machine. It has moving, moving parts on it. Uh, an article of manufacture is basically, you know, like I said, a chair that doesn't have any moving parts, a stool that doesn't have any moving parts a tripod that doesn't have any moving parts. A smartphone technically doesn't have any moving parts uh, on it. Could be an article of manufacture. <laughs> Composition of matter. So if you invent something like flubber that you can put on your sneakers and you can jump up to the, the rafters, uh, you know, any, any comp composition of matter, combining, you know, chemicals to do things. Again, they have to do something, um, can be patentable. Uh, method or processes, these are typically considered <clears throat> a means to an end. So a process tends to be, you'll find this in manufacturing, manufacturing processes, um, except for software is always a process, is always a process. But in the, the realm of the physical processes tend to be in like a manufacturing process. How do you make something? A method is how you use a product to obtain a specific result. So, um, you know, as we'll see in the film Patent Absurdity, how do you use a telephone to hedge your investment? <laughs> is, that pat is that patentable? You find out it's not. Um, but business methods like any e-commerce method or online banking, all that stuff is, pat is patentable. So you can't just like make an app or make any type of business thing and, and maybe not infringe on someone's patent. That's the real, that's the real important thing. Okay. Um, again, improvement patents, you have to, if your improvement improves upon something that's patented, you will have to license that patented idea to execute your improvement in a product. If that underlying technology or patented idea is in the public domain, you don't have to do nothing. You just, execute your patented improvement in a, in a product. These last for 20 years. You get 20 years and then those things expire. Now, there's a lot of funny business around this. Um, you know, uh, things that you may not think are patentable um, that are, are formats. PDF, dot, doc, docx, PowerPoint, uh, dot MOV, MP4, MP3, uh, any of those things are, are patentable. Those are processes for compressing information. So compression formats and algorithms, those, a lot of those are basic algorithms that do a specific 
that do a specific thing. Um, so they're applied uniquely, which are patentable. Uh, so some funny businesses like, you know, when um, Apple's patent for QuickTime was about to expire, they came out with like QuickTime Plus. So they just tweaked the algorithm, the compression method a little bit differently and filed for a patent on it to keep, keep their monopoly. Okay, so what is a freaking design patent? As I said, it's the ornamental, ornamental design on an, an object that has use. This tends to be uh, on items that are, you know, uh, articles of manufacture, so solid items. So, this hammer, right? You could patent the design of the head on this, on this hammer. In fact, the whole hammer itself, or this hay hook, uh, you know, uh, you could patent the design on this, right? Um, you could patent the design on this, this curve here, how it actually looks, okay? How this hammer actually looks. You could file for a design patent on it. Now, if the way that this hammer looks actually affects how it works, like say like, you know, the head is shaped in this specific way to drive nails easier, right? Um, then you cannot file for a design patent on it. It's a utility patent because your design does something. But your hammer, right, um, while it may not be subject to, um, to patent as a utility patent, right, you could file for a patent on how it, on just simply how it looks. That would give you a monopoly on, he, on hammers that look like this for 15 years. Okay, this covers everything from like beverage containers, jewelry, furniture. Um, Apple has a patent on uh, phones that are rectangular with curved edges. They have a patent on that design, on, on that look. In fact, almost everything on your smartphones are patented. Um, they have design patents on, you know, how your uh, address book looks and also how it functions and how it searches, okay? Um, fonts, buildings, uh, all these things. Icons, so like, you know, the icon for your address book and your iPhone is, 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 can be subject to design patent, okay? So we know this is stuff is kind of similar to trade dress, which is, you know, trademarkable, you know, beverage containers or whatever. The, the only main difference is that a beverage contain, container to um, get trademark means that you see the bottle and you think of Coca-Cola. You think of the brand that produces them. You see this hammer, right? You don't have to think of nothing else. It's just how it looks is subject to design patent. You don't have, it doesn't have to have any secondary meaning. You just see it and it's a hammer and it hammers, but this is how it looks and no one can make a hammer like this. No one can make a hay hook that looks like this. But if they see this hay hook and they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's uh, Andre's hay hooks, you know, then, then that would be, you know, a trade dress, which is, which is trademark. But you don't need that for uh, design patents. They just, it's just how objects look, okay? Okay, so again, like I said, if this hammer has actual, not actual function, but like if this head, um, you know, is, a, is essentially new in innovation that does something different, like its design has utility value to it, like specifically, um, that's something new and patentable, uh, your design patent will be invalidated. So again, it's just how it looks, okay? The way that you would infringe on my design patent is you make a hammer that's substantially similar. It looks very similar to this. I think I'm going to do every one of these lectures with my old school hammer and hay hook because it's pretty freaking cool. Um, anyways, does that kind of make sense? It used to only last 14 years, uh, so, uh, but it's 15 years duration. Things like the Statue of Liberty used to be um, you know, subject to a uh, design patent. So like people couldn't make uh, you know, little tchotchkes and things with, with Lady Liberty on it. Like I said, the iPhone's round corners and how the iPhone actually looks uh, is, is a subject to design patent. How um, the softwares look, 
within, within them are the functions look, the icons for the functions, have a, the icon for the note, the note, the notebook, or the calculator, those are subject to design patent, and then how the actual calculator looks could be subject to design patent. Um, yeah, like I said, guitar bodies, uh, watch designs, Crocs, you know, are subject to design patents. So how they look are, are design patent. The Coca-Cola bottle that we saw is subject to uh, trade dress, that's trademark. At first, it was subject to uh, a, pat a design patent, but you know what happens with design patent? That shit expires after 15 years. If someone sees your hammer and thinks of your brand, it's, it's acquired secondary meaning, then, you know, that's freaking great because like say I get a um, design patent on this hammerhead from my company and after, you know, during that 15 years of my monopoly on this design, people start to associate this design of hammerhead with my company, then I could file for a trademark on it. And that's exactly what Coca-Cola did is they had a, a design patent on their bottle, <clears throat> which gave a monopoly on that bottle design, just how it looked. And then through time, people became, uh, you know, started to associate that design with them. And then they were able to file for a design patent, which they gave them, you know, basically forever a monopoly on that design.